we are going to begin this public hearing of, uh, of the redistricting uh, committee. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick it off with introductions, let each of you introduce yourself, but I'll begin by uh, saying I'm, I'm Greg Kimsey. I was uh, uh, elected to serve as, I'm the Clark County Auditor uh, but in, my, in my day job, but then I was also elected by the uh, uh, four appointed members of the redistricting committee to serve as chair of this committee. So, Morgan, you're next in line. You go, why don't you go ahead? Sure. Hi, I'm Morgan Holmgren. I am a member of the redistricting committee. I was um, appointed as a Democrat. Um, I'm a Democratic precinct committee officer for the 725th. Thank you. Juan? Yeah, my name is Juan Gamboa. I've been a Clark County resident for the last 20 years. I got elected to be part of the Re uh, Republican Re uh, Districting Committee um, this past couple of months. So glad to be here. Good. Janet? All right, I'm Janet Landisberg. I was the second Democrat that was appointed to the committee. I'm retired. Um, I'm an elected PCO. I'm also an officer in the 17th legislative district. Um, and I think that one of the reasons I got appointed is because I shared working on my former experience as an Army JAG officer with um, one of the other council members. Come on. You guys doing a uh, Kamal Richards, a uh, PCO 220 uh, for the Clark County Republican Party. Um, and I was appointed as the second uh, Republican representative of the um, redistricting committee. Thank you, Kamal. Um, so I'm going to begin this uh, next item on the agenda a presentation by the uh, committee members. I'm going to kick it off with uh, uh, hopefully just a brief overview of, of our the sort of the responsibilities of the committee. And it begins with uh, this language that's shown on your screen right now, uh, section 6.5 and 6.6 .6 of the Clark County Charter that calls for the formation of a, of a county redistricting committee uh, when every 10 years when the federal census is done. Uh, that committee uh, is, uh, consists of two members of the Republican Party, two members of the Democratic Party, uh, and those members are appointed by the county council. Uh, they are then uh, have responsibility to select a, a chair of the committee. And then that committee then selects a, uh, uh, what's referred to as a redistricting master. And I wanna take the opportunity right now to, to express, I think the, on behalf of the full committee, uh, our, our great appreciation and, and, res and respect for the really good work that uh, our redistricting master has done for the committee. Uh, Paul Newman, who works with the GIS department in Clark County, um, not only extremely competent, uh, very professional, but just a really hard worker as well. Uh, I don't know how many evenings, and uh, I know he worked at least a couple weekends uh, responding to texts uh, at all hours of night and, and day. Um, so Paul, um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I speak on behalf of the entire committee. Uh, we just really appreciate all of the hard work you've done for us and all the good work you've done for us. So uh, thank you again, Paul. Very welcome. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, what's what's that's what's laid out in the uh, charter. Uh, the redistricting committee uh, is to receive a plan submitted by the redistricting master. Uh, if the redistricting committee then adopts that plan, it is submitted to the county council, who either adopts it or they can amend it. Uh, there are limitations on on the extent to which they can amend it. Um, the criteria that's be used by the redistricting committee in, in redistricting the boundaries of the council districts is uh, uh, in the charter set forth as uh, this statute, RCW 29A 76010. And you'll see on your screen, um, has a, a, well, that RCW. And there are um, five elements uh, put forth in the statute, and they're kind of, I've got them uh, uh, in bold, kind of the really uh, critical elements uh, in bold here. So we have equal population, nearly equal population uh, as possible. So you'll see each of these criteria are not, it's not, uh, not a requirement to be exact, but it's uh, as, as possible. So equal population, 
uh, each district shall be as compact as possible. Each district shall be contiguous. Uh, may not population, <clears throat> excuse me, may not be used for purposes of favoring or disfavoring any racial group or political party. And then uh, finally, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, recognizing nat natural boundaries and again, to the extent possible, preserving existing communities of related and mutual interest. So those are what's put forth in statute. That's what's specifically called out in the county charter. Uh, but the committee members went a little bit further and agreed that we should also uh, use a couple of other criteria. And that was uh, at one point or another, each of the committee members agreed that the uh, a voter approved map, the map that the voters approved in the just recently, uh, recently completed November 21 general election, uh, that the maps we put, we adopt and put forth to the council should be in alignment with the map that the voters approved. And then also um, that we would use, try to use existing precinct boundaries. So with those um, criteria in mind, the committee then asked uh, the redistricting master to create two plans. And rolling up on the screen now uh, are the two plans. Uh, this A2 plan was um, is the first plan, or is one of the two plans. I'm not sure how they got labeled A, A and B, but um, uh, this A2 plan, you can see on the plan, if you, if you are watching this on your screen, you can see it has um, information about the compactness and population data. It overlays the plan onto the existing, or onto the uh, voter approved plan, onto the five council uh, district plan that was approved by voters. And you can see then the lines of the, uh, of the proposed plan A2. Um, you might ask why A2? So we started with plans A and B, and then in order to get the populations just a little bit more equal, um, made a, just a couple of very minor adjustments, I think with one or two precincts in each of these two plans. So the second plan uh, that's now rolling up on your screen is plan B2. Um, so with that introduction, I'm going to, uh, members of the committee will be talking about um, the, the two plans. So I guess with, uh, given that the plans are A and B, we'll let uh, uh, the sponsors of plan A2 go first. Uh, Kamal and Juan, why don't you guys go ahead and talk about uh, the plan that you've been uh, promoting? <clears throat> yeah. Um, you can go ahead and put up the first slide. I'm going to go ahead and start and read the first one. Um, so the, I'm going to read the first bullet, which is the um, highest priority issue. The original five district map was created with estimated data, um, not the census 2020 data. Um, the map was created in 2014 and adjusted in 2021 with estimated data. The measure to split Clark County from four to five districts went into 2021 ballot prior to the county having census data. And then the five district map was population balanced and showing uh, good compactness with estimated data. And the last bullet is once census 2020 data was made available, that changed the estimated populations of each district. The districts one through, uh, one through four were pretty much, you know, within 1%. Uh, while the district five was actually uh, uh, negative 5%, which I think equates to uh, 5,400 um, individuals. Juan? Yeah, and go to the next slide. Um, uh, so the second priority issue that we ran into uh, was we come to believe that there was a mistake done on the first original redistricting committee map. Um, so the committee moved the east side boundary of District 3 westward uh, for population reasons and to look what seems to be use 164th as a natural boundary. Um, from the map, you can see that, you know, using that boundary, it's basically a straight line down the, the district. Um, that boundary uh, change effectively redistricted out to committee members. Um, so after the boundary was moved, the redistricting committee went back to test the map for gerrymandering. Um, at that point, they realized that if they were to put the two uh, committee members back into the map, that would have thrown the population off um, with unworkable numbers. So uh, 
the option was to just go back to the original uh, and not um, put those committee members back into the map. Um, at that point, um, in our opinion, um, that kind of violated RCW 29 uh, section, well, section 76, uh, 10, and uh, within that section four item D. So because of population management, um, they disfavored a committee member in district three or district members in district three. Um, so our opinion about this is uh, open to interpretation and to questions um, and we can elaborate if that's needed. Well, you certainly can, if you want to talk a little more now Juan, you're welcome to, or we can move on to uh, the other map, other map. Um, I think that was it. We try to summarize it as best as we could. Okay. Um, if people have questions, and yeah, we'll definitely elaborate on that. Okay, good. So we'll move on now to um, uh, Morgan and, and Janet to speak about uh, Plan B2. Okay, um, I think I'll just explain this sheet that we put together. Um, I want to thank Paul again, our uh, redistricting master for pulling together the numbers that we're using as the basis for this, which is just a comparison of the voter approved plan, the B plan and the A plan using um, several of the categories that we've decided were important or the RCW lays out. So if we look at the first, we're looking at equal population, um, the voter approved plan was off by um, 2.2 percent if we're looking at total population deviance, which is just the absolute value of the number it's off from the 100,622 people that would be perfectly equal. In the B2 plan, that deviance goes down to 593 people, 0.1 percent, and in the A2 plan, it is lower, 487, but when we're getting that small, we're getting down to 0.1 percent as well. And one thing that um, we've talked about a number of times is that the census data included um, some level of error this year um, intentionally to protect citizen privacy. And so I think that we've talked about that the difference between those two numbers, we can't be confident that it's real. It could just be because of added error. Um, it may be real, it may not be, we just can't be sure one way or the other. So I think from my perspective, these two maps, um, based on the equal population category, these two maps are essentially the same. The next category that we discussed is compactness, uh, the next factor in um, the RCW, as compact as possible, using the uh, a method that, again, our redistricting master made available to us called Pulls B and Popper score, um, a higher score on each of these indicates a more compact district. And I think as you can see in the total there, the map total where we summed or looked at the average compactness where the maximum score, I believe was one, um, the B2 map is slightly more compact. I think another thing that we identify that we're unclear on is how much is a significant difference in terms of compactness, but we are seeing that the B2 map is more compact than the A2 map. And then the next item that we compared and considered was how much did the map change from the voter approved map? Here we see that the B2 map moved 12 precincts and about 15,000 people, while the A map moved 30 precincts and about 47,000 people. So it's a pretty big difference in terms of change from the voter approved map. And then finally, we also asked um, Paul to do an analysis on the differences between um, communities of interest. We had a hard time defining specific communities of interest, but one thing that was of concern for the committee was um, the eastern border of District 3, because that's where the main uh, disagreements were. And so we asked how many neighborhood associations were split along that eastern border of District 3. And in the B2 map, it's one that is split in half. And in the A2 map, it is four neighborhood associations that are split. And so 
if that is an important distinction, um, that seems to point in the favor of the B2 map. And so those are the different criteria we've considered. Um, and from my perspective, that's why the B maps are uh, superior. Is that uh, is that the conclusion of your of your remarks at this point in time, Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Sorry. No. Can thank I, you. Thank you. I just add a little something else to what we said. And when you go and look at the B two map, it does use the one sixty fourth, one sixty second Carter, which has been a recognized boundary um, in this area. For years, it was the border. It is currently the border until next year between the 17th and the 18th legislative districts. So when the county charter members drew the map, they didn't just make up the boundaries. They used accepted um, known boundaries that have been used in the past. Thank you, Janet. Anything else that either of you want to share? Okay. Um, so we um, we're at the point in the in the, this evening's meeting where we're going to invite the public to make comments. We have received um, five or excuse me six written comments. Uh, I think each of the committee members have were provided with those. Um, I sort of did a quick little summary. Um, three, you no, know, it looks like, yeah, six six comments. Three that very specifically support uh, the Plan B two. Uh, one that has a general support for the voter approved uh, uh, five district plan, and then two that are uh, what I would describe as general comments. So, uh, Kristen, do we have? Any other written comments that we've received, or are there any members of the public who would like to uh, speak to us this evening? And maybe you can take a minute to talk about how people can um, uh, provide oral comments. Yes, I have not received any other written comments, but if any members of the public listening would like to comment, um, instructions are on screen. If you're logged in, there should be a raise your hand icon in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And if you're calling by phone, if you press star three, that will raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, yeah, as we go. Good. Well, okay, well, I do see well, oh, a few hands yeah, popping up here, so. Okay, good. Thank you, uh, Kristen. Uh, while we're, uh, well, let's go ahead with the members of uh, who, folks who have raised their hand and uh, I, we, we also have uh, Chuck Green, who is the uh, uh, former chair of the Clark County Charter Review Commission and also the chair of the subcommittee of the Clark County Charter Review Commission that uh, uh, developed the resolution that was placed in the ballot uh, that voters approved creating the five council district plan. And I know Chuck has, a, uh, has an interest in speaking this evening as well, but let's go ahead with members of the, members of the public uh, who want to speak. Okay, so I will put the time limit here on the screen if you still wish to go that route. And so uh, when you're speaking, if you would identify yourself and then yeah, kind of follow the three minute time frame. Okay, wonderful. And I will start with um, Janet Hedgepath. Please go ahead with your comment. Hi, my name is Janet Hedgepath, and I'm a citizen of Clark County, and I'm here tonight to ask that you all um, vote for um, B, the option B, or map B. I am interested in that because although both maps show a fairly close population equality and compactness, I believe that B is better because it moves less people, it's closer to what the voters chose, and um, it 
is less splitting of the, the neighborhood associations. Uh, also, that the object of redistricting is for the voters, not for the counselors. And so I don't think they need to be taken into consideration. It needs to be a map that works well for the voters. And that's really what redistricting is about. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kristen, any, another member of the public who wants to speak? Uh, yes, I have Jackie Lane. Go ahead with your comment. Hi there, and I want to thank you um, for the work that you've done on this. I really support the map that aligns to the voter intent on the charter amendment. The voters did understand what was on the ballot when they voted for this. I watched the council interfere with the selection of two of the redistricting candidates, um, and that disturbs me quite a bit, given what those two people are trying to do with our um, maps. Gerrymandering is doubly suspect given that interference. Please respect the voters. Please respect the redistricting master. Thank you very much, Paul, for the work that you've done. Please do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie. Um, person, okay. another, another speaker? Yes, it looks like we have about six or seven more. Um, right. So I will go ahead. This user, you are called in, but when you're notified, please go ahead with your comment. Hi, my name is Jason. I live in Clark County. And I think A2 is gerrymandering. It's clearly to favor a political party. And it will probably be took into court if passed and thrown out. Um, one other thing, I tried to join your WebEx and it just asks for a password. So I wasn't able to do that, but that's okay. I've seen these maps in your past meetings on YouTube. Um, I got to say that I'm, I'm in that area where you'd be pushing me into, I, I think it's District 4. I don't appreciate that and support B2, that's all. Good, well, Jason, thank you for your comments. I'm sorry about the WebEx problems. Okay, this is another um, call caller, so go ahead and state your name and your comment. I'm Carolyn Crane, and I live here in Clark County in the urban growth boundary. I would like to comment on a couple of things. Yes, your WebEx pro is, is got a problem. Secondarily, I would like to make the comment that I do not believe that the voters read all of the information with regards to half a Bible worth of documents and uh, comments on all the amendments. I do not believe that it is in Washington state law or the county's best interest to create a form of government or recreate a form of government or restructure a form of government at the same time that they're creating districts. Washington state separates the two of them under RCWs for a reason. You're supposed to not be involved in deciding whether a political party is to be favored or not in the process of redistricting. One forms a type of government in one hand, and then the people are allowed to select who will lead that form of government with the other hand. And that is where I come from with this. In looking at the original stuff that the voters voted for, I do not believe that they understood what they were voting for. I do know that I did about 120 hours worth of work myself to break it down. If you know another voter that's willing to do that, I'm shocked. I didn't like either of the two maps that were presented, frankly, and I did the work to find another alternative, which meets all of the criteria. The map presented in B is not compact. It's compact in District 3, but District 5 is what? Almost two thirds of the county geographically? That is not okay. 
It is not a good thing to decide that you're going to have a predetermined outcome to elections. I may not like the person sitting in a seat right this minute, but that person shall pass and my government needs to stay here. It needs to be solid and it needs to be strong. And the people need to have a right to choose who their elected officials will be. So creating a different map was not impossible. And I did so. And I submitted it to Kamal uh, a couple of days ago, which is obviously late for your process, but not too late for your decision. So I recommend that you stop, slow down, and take a look at it. Without having the population breakdowns accurate, I was able to come so close that by moving one more precinct, you can actually accomplish more compact district out of five. You can create a couple of very purple districts, and you'll have a couple blue and, a, and one red. So we're not meeting a political partisan line. We're not pandering to a political party, which is against the law. We aren't pandering to a race or, or sector or ethnic group of society, which is against the law. And what we are doing is giving the people the power to decide who their leaders are. I do not believe that the, the Charter Review Committee should ever be putting a map in their process. That's not their job. And I do believe that the Redistricting Committee should do their job. And I would appreciate it if you would consider that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Next, I have... One second. Cheryl Berkeley, go ahead with your comment. Hi, thank you. Cheryl Berkey. Um, I am call uh just want to comment that I have followed the Charter Review Commission um and have gone to a number of their represent uh presentations by both Chuck Green and uh Terry Niles. Um and I am for B2. It closely represents what the what I took as a preliminary map, knowing full well as uh, both of them have said that it was estimates. Um, I have followed your uh, meetings as well, and am very dismayed that as a person who is very active in her neighborhood, that the neighborhood associations were not even looked at until late going on. Um, and being an unincorporated Clark County, I was also very dismayed at the fact that so much emphasis was put on the city of Vancouver. I, I, I don't get it. I, I just really don't. So um, I think enough voters did understand. They could have. Uh, Looked a lot of this up. It was all there at their disposal. I don't think voters are as naive as people want to believe. And so my vote is for B2. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, I have John Lay. Go ahead with your comment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? We can, John. Thank you, John Lee from Camus. I wanna thank all of you for the time and the energy that you've put in, in working for the people, given what you had to begin with. It's been stated several times that there was a voter approved map. I would like to honestly comment that there was no map in the voters pamphlet. The people voting were not able to look at a specific map and say, here's what we have now, and I am voting in favor of plan A or B or C, and they certainly didn't understand the realities of it from my perspective. That having been said, uh, the change changes are challenging. In the ideal world, I would love to see a balanced map in all districts that we have um, so that any given political party can come up and win with the proper candidate so that the people have a legitimate choice. The redistricting process created an unbalanced map, and I do appreciate the efforts 
that went into A2 to place our current elected officials in, in separating them from all being in the same di district and have them in uh, at least two of them, if I'm looking correctly, in separate districts. They have been elected by the people, they have been chosen by the people, and ultimately to have three of them all in the same district, um, I, I think was an abomination. So I appreciate the effort that went forward. Therefore, I favor map number A2 as that is the best possible outcome given the reality of what the voters at the end of the day voted in favor of. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, I have Judy Zeter. Go ahead with your comment. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Judy Zeter. I was born and raised here in Clark County, fourth generation. And uh, I've lived in the battleground area most of my life. So the notion that District 5 is very large and spread out is not a surprise to me. Uh, because I rode school bus 45 minutes back and forth to school for about 12 years. Now, on topic, uh, I think you need to give voters credit for intelligence. I happened to take a peek at the voters' pamphlet uh, for this measure day ago, and yeah, the Charter Review Committee map is right there for anyone to read. I favor any map that is balanced in population. Uh, basically, hope the committee puts blinders on when it comes to favoring one party or another. And uh, B2 is the closest. So uh, thank you very much for listening. And I appreciate the hard work for both the committee members and staff. You are not going to please everyone, and I think you figured that out by now. But thank you for your work. Uh, thank you, Judy. Okay, excellent. And I do apologize that I have mispronounced a few of your names. But um, next, I have Kirk Van Gelder. Hello. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you, Kirk Van Gelder, lifetime uh, Clark County resident, and. Um, co-president of uh, one of the neighborhood associations, the one that's been disassociated, unfortunately, but uh, nevertheless. So uh, I'm also East Clark County, and in looking at the maps, it looks like to me A2 is the best. Um, and the reasons for that looks like B2 to me gives all the power down into Vancouver and disassociates or disaffects um, the rural residents uh, and all. So. Um, I like the balance better of the A2 map by far. Again, I also uh, was surprised that uh, that the original one was going to put all three or three of the councilors into the same district. That uh, was very unfortunate. I know RCW speaks to that in the redistricting process of uh, trying to avoid that uh, specifically. So. Uh, B or A2 seems to do a better job of all of those things that um, are important to our, our rural people. We already have so limited a voice. Please don't make it worse um, by um, going with anything but A2. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Okay, so I have Terry Niles. Go ahead with your comment. Okay, sorry, can you hear me? We um, can. Okay, great. Hey, first I wanted to say um, good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you for the redistricting committee for allowing me this opportunity to provide public comment on the Clark County Count Council District's redistricting process that you're going through after the 2020 uh, census status. I just want to quickly address for uh, Mr. Lay who commented that there was no map. I'm sitting here in front of the voters guide and there is a map and there's a detailed list of precincts that was on the map for the voters to look at and for them to look at before they voted. So that that information was uh, available and I want to thank the caller before um, who has attended the many meetings that we had as a charter review uh, commission and 
in which we went through this and when we went through the process and we and we were clear about it being an estimate. Um, so I'm here not only as a charter review commission, I'm not going to speak for the commissioner, the commission. Uh, Chuck Green is here. He's the co chair of the committee of the commission and he can speak to that. I was on the redistricting subcommittee and I can speak for that in the fact that we did not consider counselors uh, where they lived. We did not consider that because that was not part of what we we saw was uh, we were tasked with. We started with a GIS map that was given it to, given to us. We didn't choose that. It was given to us and we went and we went from there. And so that addresses that kind of issue, that issue that I said. I also, after reading the Colombian um, article and listening to some of the comments from the Republican uh, members of this committee, I want to tell you that I'm kind of surprised that you would say something like Republicans were not involved in the process. Um, I ran as a charter review commissioner and I remember a Republican running in every single position. Um, in there, so they were, they did have the opportunity to be involved. We had 1 very well known Republican actually win a seat on the charter review commission Liz Pike and she, um, she resigned and didn't participate, but there was multiple opportunities. I know that we had a couple members of our commission that are uh, that are, you know, very uh, right leaning that actually came to large Republican gatherings and went through this information with you. So, I don't understand um, the comment that that you were not given an opportunity. The, as far as the, uh, the, RC, the RCWs and the laws around redistricting, they're very clear. We have political laws around things like PDC filings with, for candidates and for initiatives and for how redistricting uh, happens. And I am urge you to follow follow the law and not take into account where a counselor sits, where a counselor doesn't sit, because I don't consider that legal. So thank you very much and thank you for allowing me to to speak. Um, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. <clears throat> okay, so I have John Anderson. Go ahead with your comment. Hey, uh, my name is John Anderson. I'd like to thank you all for having me here and thank you all for the work that you've been doing so far in this redistricting process. Uh, I'll start off by saying that I uh, support uh, most of all map B2. I think it is the one that not only comports most closely to uh, what voters had um, approved by ballot this year, uh, but also uh, comports most closely to uh, state law as well. I know the proponents of map A2 have cited uh, RCW 29A.76.10, uh, uh, section 4D, saying that population data may not be used for the purposes of favoring or disfavoring any racial group or political party. Uh, that said, they keep pointing that section of the law, but they fail to make any case about how uh, MAP B2 violates that portion of the law. And I think in their risk misreading of the RCW, they are overlooking uh, section 4A, which mentions that um, they need to be considering uh, municipal corporations, counties, special purpose, purple purpose districts, and other smaller political boundaries. And I think uh, we really see that uh, that is taken into account in Map B2 in keeping more neighborhood associations together and keeping more like communities together, which state law is very explicit about. Um, so I, I again support and thank you all for the work you're doing. I do think it's unfortunate that some members of the commission um, seem to think that voters were especially um, ignorant on this ballot measure. I think it shows um, a bit of distrust in the will of voters. Um, and I think that they did very much know what they were voting for. I think that there were vocal uh, vote no uh, campaigns, and I think any voter who was paying attention in this election cycle, like most of us were, uh, knew the score. So I think it is disingenuous and um, just a poor representation of our electoral process to insinuate otherwise. Uh, with that, I'll thank you again for your time, and I think that it's pretty clear that B2 is the map that most closely follows state law. Thank you, John. <clears throat> okay, I have. Anthony Vendetti, go ahead with your comment. Hi there. 
Uh, this is Anthony Vendetti. Um, I am uh, just concerned with uh, in uh, map 2A, uh, the, uh, the concerns with splitting up communities of interest. Uh, in this case, we're looking at neighborhood associations that are being divided. And while uh, 2B does have one division of a neighborhood association, uh, 2A has numerous uh, breaks in the neighborhood associations. And tearing communities apart, apart like that um, doesn't seem as uh, beneficial to how our communities operate and what helps keep them as cohesive units and why we have neighborhood associations in the first place. So uh, that is why I, I, I strongly support uh, 2B. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like I went through everyone who currently has their hand raised. But again, if you're calling in, you can press star three. And if you are logging in through the computer in the bottom right hand corner should be raise your hand icon. So this Green. is Chuck, Chuck Green. I apologize. Yeah. I was brought in as a panelist. Um, go, ahead, go ahead, Chuck. All right, thank you. Um, and, and thank you for indulging me. Um, so good evening and uh, redistricting committee members. As you know, I'm Chuck Green. And uh, just a clarification for, Ms. for Mr. Kimsey, I'm still co-chair of the Clark County Charter Review Commission, at least for the next three weeks and our terms end. Mm -hmm. um, we were elected by the voters of Clark County in 2020 to conduct the first ever review of the Clark County Home Rule Charter. I was the chair for the subcommittee who developed the five district map included in Charter Amendment 3, passed by 71% of the voters in the November's general election. I've had the opportunity to previously join you to answer questions and provide clarification and intent regarding the five district map. A couple of weeks ago, we shared with you a memo summarizing the process and chronology events of events as to how we developed the five district map that went to voters. I'm here tonight for the record and for the community participating in this process to correct some misunderstandings and clarify a few other points that have recently been brought up uh, by members of the redistricting committee and uh, actually in uh, testimony tonight. First, there seems to be a concern that partisan politics played a role in our work that the Charter Review Commission is all Democrats. I can assure you that is not the case. We are elected nonpartisan representatives. I can attest that several commissioners are not affiliated with any political party. Personally, I have not been actively involved with the Democrats for over four years. Second, there are statements that the Charter Review Commission voters made a mistake. I wanna clear this up. As I've stated before, we started the process using the five district map developed by the freeholders back in 2014. While we did overlay the approximate residence locations of the incumbent counselors on that map, we decided at that point that purposefully moving boundaries around just to keep partisan counselors in their current district boundaries would have constituted gerrymandering. We worked to prevent a mistake from that point on focused on complying with population balancing and district mapping compliant with state law. At no point did we move district boundaries around to specifically include or exclude any incumbent counselors. Also wanna clarify a point made tonight. The previous west boundary of District 3 was I-205, and it's still I-205 in our five district map. We did not move that boundary to the west, but the other part of tonight's statement is correct. 164th Avenue is considered a good eastern boundary for District 3, just like I-205 was considered a good boundary. I do want to point out that we clearly stated to voters that we based our map on estimates instead of census numbers. The map that's on page 123 of the voters pamphlet received by every household in Clark County with the registered voter clearly states at the top current population estimate. In every presentation we made to citizens, we made it abundantly clear that our map balanced population based on the best estimates we had at the time and that the redistricting committee would need to make minor changes to the voter approved map to balance out to the census. I also heard that we did not provide an opportunity for people to submit a statement against this five district proposal or any other charter amendment. As noted in our memo, there were two separate clear public opportunities, one offered by the Charter Review Commission, the other by the elections office for people to sign up to write an opposing statement 
and absolutely no one responded. I also want to note that no matter what map is produced by this committee, the charter amendment approved by the voters also includes a transition plan into the new five district configuration. This transition plan clearly states that the current representative of District 3, Karen Bowerman, will continue to represent that district until the end of her term and also includes transition planning for the other uh, four counselors. I hope you believe that our process has always been transparent. We've attempted to demonstrate by writing the memo I've referenced here, laying out our process and summarizing how we drafted the map. We did not have to write this document, but we felt compelled to do so to show our commitment of honesty and transparency to the citizens of Clark County. Thank you, and I hope you all have a good holiday period and a safe and healthy new year. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Kristen, have we had any other members of the public indicate uh, that they'd like to speak to us this evening? Um, no, I have not seen any others. Thank you. Um, Okay, and um, so members of the committee, uh, go to the order. Well, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, joined and shared their thoughts tonight. It was very helpful and enlightening. Second that. Second that. Yep. I agree. Yeah, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly join in on that. And also, I'll join in. I'll also express my appreciation to uh, my fellow members of this committee for their uh, work on this whole effort. Um, don't uh, appreciate people who step up and get involved. So, to each of you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I, I will also. I do want to. Uh, uh, reinforce the comment that a couple people have made about information that was available in the voters pamphlet. Um, <clears throat> so there are not only is there a map of the proposed five council districts, along with a listing of each of the precincts that would be moved into those five council districts. There's also a map in the voters pamphlet showing the current four council districts or the, the then current four council districts and each of the precincts. Each of the over 300 precincts that are identified to each of those four council districts. So, in the voters pamphlet mailed to every household in the county, there was a map of the four council districts with a listing of every single precinct in every single one of those four districts. And there was also a map of the proposed five council districts with a list of every single precinct that would go into those five council districts. Any interested person who is interested or concerned who wanted that information was readily available to them right in the voters pamphlet that's mailed to their home. So I we'll just uh, would like to, wanted to make that uh, as clear as I could make it. So uh, if there are other, other comments, or if not, we will adjourn for this evening. Again, uh, thank you so much to the members of the public who expressed, who have shared their time with us, shared their, their comments and views. And the uh, committee is scheduled to meet, I believe it's next Monday, the 13th, I believe we meet next. So, mm -hmm. right. so unless there's anything else from the committee members, <clears throat> we, we will adjourn for the evening. So right. thanks everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.